Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody ready? All right, start recording. All right, I'll do that. Behind the screen, screen. There's a world built for you and me. Wow. Take my hand and I'll All right. point you in the right direction. I'm just going to let this play the whole way. world of the king of TV. So everybody can hear the whole thing. The king of TV. I'm the king of TV. That's me. King of TV. Right, babies for all of you who have been writing and begging me to play the whole song and not just the first part there it is was I that like the was that the dubstep remix <laughs> I, I think it were there was some uh, feedback at the beginning through somebody's microphone or something um hi everybody this is the paul Goebel show thanks for listening uh, i'm your host paul Goebel. joining me as always is my uh co-host and best friend jim bruce I would also like to thank you for listening. <laughs> and also joining us is my other co-host and eighth best friend, Tom Griffin. <laughs> eighth? <laughs> oh, it's been a while uh, since we've been able to get together. Uh, life, I don't know about you guys, but we're killing it in Arizona. Yes, uh, I'm, and I mean, literally, uh, <laughs> we're, we're killing people in Arizona. Yeah. Hey, so here's the joke I've been doing in stand-up about Arizona, because because I'm from Arizona and Tom is also from Arizona, so all three of us are from someplace stupid. Yeah. And, uh, so Arizona, so it has opened up its uh, economy because one of the reasons they did it is because they handled the virus not at all first, which is, <laughs> but yeah, that's accurate. This is the joke I've been doing. Imagine living living in Phoenix in June, going into July, and going, I just got to get outside. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, what what is it that you needed to do outside? The bottom line is, it's all it's all political here. That's all it is. Well, first of all, uh, nobody took it seriously. Uh, but California was the same way. Yeah, things had to shut down there because... No, nobody took it seriously enough, and there weren't enough uh, sticks and not and too many carrots. But same here. That literally the day after Trump comes here and does a rally at a church where nobody's wearing a fucking mask, Doug Ducey is fitting, sitting shoulder to shoulder with every hillbilly in Arizona. Literally the next day, he says, "Okay, we gotta all wear masks, you guys. Come on, yeah. it's time to all wear masks." But no one's gonna listen to him. You know why? Because the boss of the country refuses to be seen in public wearing a mask and that's all that fucking matters this is why just like when fucking that whole shit happened with the tonight show and conan o'brien got screwed and it was all jay leno's fault this is all trump's fault in the exact same way he could easily have have avoided this months ago and been looked on as uh somewhat of a responsible leader if he had just started wearing a fucking mask. He didn't even have to tell people to wear it, right? He could have just started wearing it. He could have wore a damn MAGA red mask. Imagine if, just try to picture uh, uh, any other leader in the history of this country during a pandemic giving a speech without a mask on. How fucking ridiculous would that be if any other president tried that shit? Maybe Reagan could get away with it. Maybe Reagan. Hey, but, okay, I know you're just bringing it up. Go and do your regular question. Well, I'm wearing a mask, Mommy. That's Reagan during the Spanish flu, or whatever we're calling it now. Um, well, uh, yeah, it's not any better here, but I just went outside for the first time. Oh, I got to tell you guys what happened today. Uh, my daughter Zoe moved into her new place, so uh, we delivered her a mattress, uh, that we that a friend of ours was getting rid of so we we put it in the back of Brooks car and we drive it to downtown Phoenix uh, where Zoe's got an apartment and as as the, her and her her friends are trucking this mattress you know by all these apartments you know 
I can see this is not the greatest building. In fact, I recognize it as many buildings I myself have lived in. But as we're going by, I see one door open and like someone peeks out at us and I'm like, all right, I'll be ready. But then I hear the guy go, man, fuck you, motherfucker. And I go, what? And everybody turns around and he's on his phone. And he's going, fuck you, you fat fuck. Why don't you fucking do something about it? And he's obviously talking to a homie and interrupting him and stuff. So then when we go back around, he's out there with his buddies. And I'm like, oh, these are all meth heads who live out here. And they sit in front of their apartment and smoke. This is the greatest fucking building ever. So we gave them a cookie and moved on our way. Guess how many of them were wearing masks? I'll give you no guesses. Would it be if you walked by and you realized he never had a phone at all? He just wanted to call you a fat fuck. And he was doing this the whole time, just because. Uh, well, you guys live. You guys still live in the same building, right? Oh. Oh, that's right. You moved, Jim. What? You still live in that same place, Tom? Yeah, I do. So how is it over there, being in a connected, uh, a connected building like that? Uh, is everybody respecting each other, mask wise and stuff? Um. Well, people, I, I, people by and large, I would say probably aren't wearing masks as they come and go. But this building, like everybody in this building, pretty much keeps to themselves anyway. And you're right. You're not bumping elbows with the people in this building very much, so it's not really been an issue, I don't think. But you, you're saying like you haven't felt like someone was in your space and they didn't have a mask on. It's no, not an issue. yeah, it's no, it's not been a problem. And what about now, Jim? You work at a at a popular uh, grocery store that uh, we've all seen videos of lately. Now you don't work at that one where that lady lost her shit in North Hollywood, right? Uh, I'll go on record as saying that that lady did not lose her shit. That lady intentionally dropped her shit. That was, there was nothing, she lost nothing. So like- Well, we, she, oh, you're right. She, she hid her shit, you could say. Oh no. She, she oh, hid God. her own shit. We've all lost our shit, right? We've all lost our temper. We've all done right. that. That's not what happened. What happened is she went inside the store with an agenda right. to her temper and she she had it she put on a play. Yeah, that's what I mean by she hid her shit. She she hid her shit outside the store, went inside, and then let it go. Because obviously that was her whole fucking plan. But you haven't dealt with any horse shit like that in your store, is what I'm asking. Someone oh. deciding to take a stand. Oh yeah. The other day, the other day, I, this was actually pretty great. So I have a mask. Hold on, let me grab a mask. I have one of my masks here, my many masks that I have. And hey. in the store, and uh, I said he didn't have a mask on. I asked him to put on a mask. I said, "Hey, buddy, can you do me a favor? Could you just put on a mask, just for everybody else? I appreciate it." And he goes, "Oh yeah, it's in my pocket." I'm like, "Whatever." He just seemed a little disheveled, so he put on his mask. And this is what he did. <laughs> and those of you at home who cannot see this, he put it on his forehead and- Over his eyes? Huh? Over his eyes? Yeah. And because of my job, and I can't just react as a normal person and go, hey, uh, so you're batshit insane, right? <laughs> So I have to go, hey, man, I appreciate you putting on your mask <laughs> down over your nose and mouth. So he goes. <laughs> and he takes way too long. And I'm like, and then I go, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and there is something kind of perfect. Beautiful when somebody's being nuts and you're in a position of not being able to call them nuts to just enjoy it in a different way than I normally would because I enjoyed saying to him after he had moved so for, for you guys just listening he moves the mask from his forehead which <laughs> is great because then I know I can't get anything from his forehead down to his ma mouth and it's at that point that I go yeah, man, like that. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the truth is, obviously, he was crazy to some degree. But that's probably the best thing you could have said to him. Right? 
he was probably the kind of crazy where you don't know if you're wearing a mask correctly or not. Have you guys ever met anyone with that kind of brain disease where they can't w tell if they're wearing a mask correctly or not? <laughs> mask blindness? <laughs> That's what it is, but only for themselves. Yeah. And they can see the mask. They just don't know if it's like tilted or if it's inside out, whatever. That's uh, those guys never make good Scooby Doo villains. <laughs> um, all right, do we, do we want to talk about television? Oh, what's the, what's this now? All right. Um, uh, this is what I wanted to talk about because I am angry, and this is why I want to make sure you guys saw this episode so we could talk about it in detail. the The new Twilight Zone second season debuted a couple days ago, and unlike last season, all the episodes are up at uh, CBS All Access. Is that where you guys watched it? CBS All Access. Okay. I watched it. Yeah, me too. So um, I find it's really hard to find – to if, if there's something you want to watch on CBS, especially if it's an all-access show, you really got to look far and wide to find, a, like, a free place to watch it. You know what I mean? Like, unlike other things, you can find some, some place on YouTube or whatever, but the CBS all-access shows, they guard them uh, very closely. But uh, go ahead. I had to get a damn subscription because I, <laughs> I have – a lot of different things that I can watch a lot of different ways, you know, yeah. like, but, but, and I was like, well, I'll probably be able to watch it on this thing. Now nah, I can't watch. Well, I probably, nope. So I just got a subscription because I thought, well, there's enough on there and I can pay for it for a month and decide I don't want it. And I got the one with plenty of commercials. So it's cheaper. But that in, in that month, you can watch all of Picard. You can watch every season of Discovery. Uh, you know, there, there's two shows right there, and then you'll probably find other shit that you like. I recommend the short. I recommend the short treks. Most of those are pretty good too. Short treks, those are great. My plan is to pay for the subscription, only watch the news in the background, and then <laughs> and sports. One thing I find funny is, you know, they obviously have like old CBS shows and stuff too, but they have like every episode of Colbert and James Corden, and I'm like, man. You got to be a fan to want to see that on all access. Um, but, but the new Twilight Zone uh, premiered. And uh, the first episode um, was, uh, it wasn't that complicated. It starred Jimmy Simpson and Gillian Jacobs from Community. And the premise was, if you don't know Jimmy Simpson, he's, he's one of my favorite actors. Uh, he's been in a million things. But you Google him and you'll go, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Um, but the premise was, he, uh, Jimmy Simpson is a guy who can't really connect with anyone on a romantic level. Suddenly he starts hearing the voice of this woman in his head and they start talking. They for somehow have a connection and the two of them can communicate mentally. And, uh, and so they basically start up a relationship. Um, and so that's the premise of the show. And so I, I don't know about you guys, but I was on board. Once the show got going and the premise was was, uh, you know, it was clear what the deal was, what was wacky about this Twilight Zone-ish. I liked it, especially because I like Jimmy Simpson too, and I think he's a really good actor. Um, what did, how did you guys feel once it got, like once you realized, oh, that's what this is about? What was your reaction? I remember, I remember um, having a moment where I was like, this would be really daunting, I think, as an actor to do this, because so many of the scenes are it's just Jimmy Simpson acting against nothing. And sometimes he's not even, sometimes his dialogue is in his head. So he's not even saying anything in the scene. He's, right. he's just, he just has to play it with his face and try not to, you know, try to sell the scene, but try not to overact. Also, there's, there's multiple scenes where he's talking to another person and talking to her in his head at the same time. Yeah. Which, I mean, and I'm sure it looks more difficult than it is, but still. And he's, he's carrying a big load in that episode. And I remember thinking, like, that would, if I were an actor, I think that would be intimidating. So, like, good on him for taking the assignment and good on him for doing it well. Yeah, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, we don't see... I mean, we only know it's Gillian Jacobs because if you, you might be able to recognize her voice and her name is in the credits, but we don't see her physically until the end of the episode. It's Jimmy Sim It's all Jimmy Simpson, basically the whole, the 90% of the episode, and we only hear her voice, so it's not a back and forth. So yeah, he's really good and he's carrying the episode. Uh, what did you, how'd you feel about it, Jim? One of the things I really liked about it as a fan of the original series 
this seemed very reminiscent of the original series in a very good way, not in a like, oh, this is a ripoff, but more like this is something the original show, the very first episode, it, Paul actually, Paul and I interviewed the star of the very first episode, uh, Where Is Everybody? Uh, it's episode where it's just one actor doing having to command the presence of the entire episode. And in that one, there's literally no other actors because there's no other voice. He wakes up in a town and we don't know why he's there. And of course, it's because people in the 1950s don't understand space. That's <laughs> that one. But it, it seemed reminiscent of that to me in that it was a nice character piece. It was, um, it was cool just to see a thing where it was rooted on this guy's face and where a good Twilight Zone What's sci-fi about it is not communicated in very many special effects. That's kind of cool. Like, I always like stuff like that. I like, um, like Defending Your Life is a good example of a movie that does that, where the premise is so outlandish, but it takes place in a bus depot. Right. And this is like that in that the premise is way out there, but all it is is a dude being unpleasant. <laughs> uh, the other thing I thought the whole time was I was like, it feels like he's channeling Mark McKinney from a very specific Kids in the Hall sketch. <laughs> I did think that if you remember that where he played a dumb guy who tried to steal a car, remember that? I don't remember that one. No, yeah, I don't remember that one. But you're right. He's 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 got something wrong with him, but he's still sympathetic um, in that way. Uh, but it's a uh, it's, you know, like many Jimmy Simpson performances, he gives it all. It's not subtle at all. Um, so, yeah, so up until then, it's great. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I watch The Twilight Zone for uh, two reasons. One, so I can see good performances, just like the original. You know, uh, all the good actors and all the good writers were flocking to TV back then, and that's where short story writers were making their bones, and all young actors like Robert Redford and all that knew they could – Robert Duvall, they were all doing anthology shows like that. The other thing is, I always wait for the turn. Twilight Zone, that's what it's about. It's a story and then it's a turn, whether it's an ironic twist or whether it's uh, uh, some kind, whether uh, it explains it in a happy way, like a, a kind of an angelic happy ending or whether it's, uh, you know, it holds a mirror up to humanity and you have to question something about yourself. There's it's not a twilight zone unless it has a twist, right? If it's a, if it doesn't have a twist, then it's a fucking outer limits or something, right? Am I, am I alone on this? Or it's a later season twilight zone. Because the twilight you mean an hour long one? Yeah. See, it's funny. Cause I love the twilight zone, of course, but if you watch, I've, you know, now that it's, it's been on Netflix, I think it still is, but I've done a lot of rewatching of the twilight zone and upon reflection, it has half of the episodes are amazing and the rest of them aren't. And well, it has yeah. a legendary status, deservedly so, because it was kind of groundbreaking. Um, by the way, I like, he does see, he has a Rod Serling quality without doing an impression, by the way. I, George I, Neal? I had that exact thought. I thought that exactly, that he's, 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 he's channeling something about it, but he's clearly not doing an impression, and I like that. No, yeah. yeah, he's paying respect. He's wearing a suit and his hair is short and he's kind of had got his hands clasped in front of him. He's soft spoken. He's clearly doing it in the style that Rod Serling uh, did it. But also, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the UPN version Forrest Whitaker hosted. He was he was the host of that one. And he kind of did it that way. I think that's the way Twilight Zone needs to be hosted or narrated or whatever. Sure. Um, the but other reason I love what were you going to say, Jim? He didn't do it as well. Like this one, he does it really well. That's right. See, no, yeah, he's good. He's very good at it. Um, but the 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 other reason I like the Twilight Zone so much is is the turn is generally a clever turn. It's not like a fucking you know a dumb short story where it's like, oh no, I was a Dracula all along. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't see it coming because it was so fucking stupid. Nobody could have seen it coming. I mean, the, and it's like, that's what Night Gallery was, really. Just the, the endings were always dumb and, like, written by a child. And that's the problem I have with a lot of the first 
Twilight, the first season of these Twilight Zone episodes. So in this one, I was all excited for it to all come together. And I said, okay, all this d needs to be great is there needs to be a twist that I, don't, that I don't see coming. And they need to explain to me how they have this connection. And it'll be a perfect Twilight Zone. So, spoilers for those of you listening. Uh, they agree to meet. Jimmy Simpson and Gillian Jacobs agree to meet halfway through. Uh, while they're talking, she gets abducted. She's going, oh, no, I'm being abducted. He gets to where they're going to meet, where they were supposed to meet, finds her glasses, goes to where uh, she's like, no, I've been abducted. I can hear an owl. He finds the house where she is, knocks on the door. There's a guy there. Uh, they get into a tussle. Eventually, Jimmy Simpson uh, attacks the guy and beats his brains out uh, with, like, a poker. And then he finds Gillian Anderson and uh, or a, little, a little girl walks in and says, Daddy. And he's like, well, oh, no, I just killed this little girl's dad. Uh, but then Gillian Jacobs walks out and she says something. He's like, oh, it's you. Uh, I did it. I saved you. But it turns out he didn't save her. She was just using him because she wanted to get out of this abusive marriage. She basically was manipulating Jimmy Simpson so he would come and kill her husband and they would be free of it. The end. So, I don't know about you guys, but just the way I tell it isn't even as bad as it really fucking is. Because he even, like, snaps out of it when he's in the back of the cop car and goes, oh my god, I just beat a man to death. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? What was that all about? And I'm like, yeah, what was that all about? Who goes to a man's house and immediately beats him to death with a poker? More importantly, <laughs> okay but more importantly why didn't this guy grab a poker he's in his own house how do we know that guy didn't have a phone in his hand or ha was packing a gun isn't it very convenient that oh. this stranger was able to show up and beat the shit out of him oh to be fair you poker you brought her idiot the other thing the other thing i hated about it is of course they don't ex well first of all the 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 trope of a woman, uh, a woman using a man to kill her husband. What the fuck? You never saw Body Heat twenty fucking years ago. That's one. Of, that's you never saw Double Indemnity. It's one of the oldest fucking tropes written by man. So I'm not impressed. But second of all, they never explain why the two of them can talk to each other. In fact, they don't even bring it up again. Once he talks to her in person, they never talk about this connection they had. That is fucking bullshit. And it's especially bullshit that the front part of the episode is so fucking good. And then they shit on it at the end with this bullshit ending. It's almost as if someone wrote the, wrote the episode and said, but I can't come up with an ending. So here, you guys finish it. And some fucking intern scribbled something down and put it together. Yeah. That's why it made me so angry. Yeah, I had, I wasn't as mad, but that's just true in general. Um, but like when I watched it, I thought, I thought, why? I don't know nothing about this. Cause I thought, so did she do this on? Like, I basically thought the same things you thought, but you did miss a part. You missed what? a part that might have made you enjoy the episode. There's a tag afterwards where she tries to read a book, but she realizes her glasses are broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Like, I'll be, I don't uh... know if you guys, are, you'll realize when you start watching this show that they do that. There's nods to old episodes in almost every episode. And when he finds, picks up her glasses off the ground, that he was doing it the exact way that Burgess Meredith did. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's not a thing. I mean, they, uh, they do that all. Uh, honestly, if the, sh if, if the show was just that, like, let's, I don't know if you guys remember the other Twilight Zones, the ABC one, which was, didn't have a narrator, and they were poorly acted and poorly written. And then the UPN one with uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker, which was the same, poorly acted, poorly written. These, these episodes are getting really good actors to be in them, you know, movie stars. And, and so they're putting on great performances and they're spending a lot of money, but then you get to the end of the episode and go, what the fuck, who wrote that? It's so dumb. Yeah, here's part of what I think. First of all, by the way, I just have to quickly say the best show that's not the Twilight Zone that's, trying to be the Twilight Zone and sucks is the Jonathan Frakes one. Can't remember what that's called, but that's the best of all the terrible ones. The one where he, he comes in, did you know this? 
every that, every episode. Factor Fiction was that what it was called? Yeah, right. Is this true? <laughs> no, our writers came up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> He rides in on a bike. Did you know every Chinese person has ridden a bike at least once in their life? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> so um, here's what I, I generally, what I thought is I wasn't as upset because, because some of the mystique of the um, original Twilight Zone went away for me when I realized, oh, they ain't all great. So what I thought was I was pleased that I enjoyed the beginning of the episode so much that I was like, well, that's disappointing. Okay. But I was able to just take it for what it is, I guess, because my expectations aren't as lofty anymore for the Twilight Zone in general. But yeah, it was a disappointing ending. You're right. It was an underwritten ending. But it's why, by the way, the Twilight Zone, it just makes the argument, never make the show an hour. That's the argument. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I've always said the half-hour episodes, original half-hour episodes were always the best. Yeah. It was a mistake when they made it an hour. When Rod Serling made it an hour, I think it was a mistake. I remember the original episode of The Twilight Zone where uh, a guy with a gambling addiction is getting chased around the city by a slot machine? And, <laughs> and there's that montage of the slot machine saying his name over and over again. <laughs> and it's the fucking worst. And then there's a... They're all the robot ones where the lady don't know she's a robot. <laughs> right. We're all like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that lady's a robot. <laughs> I mean, that's the original joke. So I'm like, the fact that they did such a yeoman-like job of writing a decent episode to start with, yes, it would have been nice. I don't understand. What I thought to myself is I thought, uh, I'm pretty sure she's setting him up to be a, the murderer i hope i'm wrong ah well that's what exactly I I, what i always think is well the the lazy ending would be for her to set him up uh to kill her husband but if i can write that this should not be the ending to the tv show because I, I just wrote that for free in five seconds i guarantee the guy who wrote the ending of that episode did not do it for free what what did you think of it tom uh, well, I wasn't as upset about it as uh, you, as you were, definitely. Um, although no, like, nobody you're, was, you're, you're convincing me. I like I, I was I kind of shrugged when I saw the original ending. Now you're convincing me it was it wasn't it wasn't good. Um, here's, I just didn't care. The, I, I guess I I don't know. I didn't care that much. Um, what did but, you and think I, about? I also I did not I did not I will say I did not require them to tell me where the telepathic bond came from, and I still. I still don't care about that. I don't care that they didn't reveal that because that w it turned out that wasn't really what the episode was about. It wasn't, that wasn't the mystery. It turned out that the mystery was that he was being manipulated the whole time. And the right. turn, it's like the turn he takes, his mental breakdown turned out to be the point of the episode. But because that's, that was, that's so simple and overdone and easy to see coming, if it was an actual Twilight Zone, here's what, what if it was a good Twilight Zone, here's what would have happened. Uh, that ending comes... And stupid people go, oh, shit, what a great ending. <clears throat> and then people like us go, man, that ending was bullshit. Fuck this episode. But then they take him away in a police car, and she start, starts to read a book to her daughter. But as she does, she hears his voice, and he won't shut up. And it becomes clear that even though she sent him away, she now has to live the rest of her life with him in his head because he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life with nothing else to do but bother her. What a great ending, right? That is better. I fucking wrote that. That is better. And then st stupid people would have went, oh, shit, I just got double blown. I, don't, I think <laughs> that's what they call it. But then we all would have went, oh, fuck, I didn't see that coming. I'm not as smart as I thought. That's a Twilight Zone episode. That's when you do a shitty ending, when you have a great ending coming, when somebody gets their comeuppance. That's the other thing. In the Twilight Zone, and in the Twilight Zone for, the most, for the most part, it's people getting a comeuppance. People doing... People paying a price for something they should not have done. What, aside from being awkward and not being open to a relationship with someone and being kind of a jerk, what did Jimmy Simpson's character do to deserve being m manipulated into murder? Well, yeah, that's a good point. And you, you could even argue that the, the 
the episode stops sort of just short of saying he has a personality disorder. So like he might actually not be completely mentally sound. Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, the, 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 the impression I got is he's a guy who desperately wants a partner or at least just a friend to hang out with, but he's so socially awkward to the point where he's kind of a jerk and people don't like him. Well, welcome to America. You just described half of the fucking population. So it's not that hard. He can join a social group with other people. But you're right. If, it, if like one of the psychiatrists he had seen and went, I think you might have a disorder. Then it's like, wow, she fucking manipulated a sick person. That's horrible. And again, maybe if they had shown us that Gillian Anderson or Gillian Jacobs is actually this sociopath who does a lot of so horrible things. And the moral of the story is don't believe, don't trust every voice you hear in your head. I would have loved that too, but nothing. The twist ending is that in the end, she's Gillian Anderson. That's your twist. <laughs> like he walks in and goes, oh my God, weren't you on community? She's like, well, I've done other things, but yes. And he goes, that's the twist. He goes, oh, I, I don't, I've never seen what other things. And she's like, uh, let's see, I, I was in the Mothman prophecies. He's like, didn't see it. Yeah. Where's your and he just, she just starts naming things that she's done. And everyone didn't see it. But didn't see it. you know what? I, I will say this because first I had to pay for this damn subscription. It was good enough that I thought I wouldn't mind watching more episodes of this particular Twilight Zone. So it's a credit to the show overall that I thought, I bet they got better episodes because this one wasn't this one wasn't an absolute train wreck. There was plenty to watch. Um, I was going to give as an example, of course, it's a good life as an example where nobody learns a lesson and no one gets to come up and. Yeah, but that's a monster story. Again, it's it's a it, like you said, it's a different story. And and I want to you just reminded me of something you said when you were like, well. Um, the talking to each other thing, the, how the story wasn't about that. And I agree with you. And if they, if they, if they had shown us what the story was actually about and it was something to care about, because again, that's a very Twilight Zone thing too, to say, you know what? You were concerned about the wrong thing. You were wondering uh, this whole episode, how they were talking to each other when what you should have been wondering is, oh my God, I think she's manipulating him. You know, that's, that's very Twilight Zone-ish. But they didn't earn that, and, and that wasn't – I will say, did you watch the second episode of this season with Marina Batron, either of you guys? No. Um, that one's much better in the sense that uh, it just makes it's, – it's a very – it's almost it's a very simple story. Once they tell you what the deal is, it's one of those. You go, oh, that's what's going on, and you wait to see it play out. You know what I mean? One of those episodes. But, uh, but I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot better than this one. But I don't know. Watch because some of the first season episodes are really good, and some are bad. And some, honestly, like the 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 finale of the first season with Zazzy Beats is so meta, I could barely watch it. Honestly, it's yeah. because uh, Jordan Peele plays himself in the episode. It's <laughs> it's an episode within an episode. Oh, and, would, by the way, Rod Serling did that once. Yeah, in one episode, he spoke to. Uh, uh, Keenan Wynn, I think, was the actor in that episode. Hey, so let me ask you a question because you brought it up. I'll ask you both uh, if you can remember. What's your favorite original series happy ending episode? Oh, well, my favorite episode it does have a happy ending. It's the fortune teller one with William Shatner. Hey, that's a very good one, yeah. And, and I'm, that's one of the reasons I like it because he obviously gets caught up in, this, in his own superstition but he breaks free of it and they leave and nothing happens because they come to their senses. I say that's a happy ending. And the coda where there's another couple where you realize some people don't get out of it is pretty good. <laughs> right. They've been here for a long, long time. Yeah. I like that. Well, what about you, Tom? Uh, I, I, you know, I've, I've not made a study of the twilight zone. I've seen a handful of episodes of the original series, but I like never really got completely into it. So I can't, I don't feel well, how like about I this answer that. When you, I, I think all of us of a certain age, there was an episode of a Twilight Zone where we watched it and realized, oh, I think this show is good. What was there an episode like that for you that you watched and went, oh, this show was a good one, man? Uh, I know because I think it was, I think it was already sold to me as a good show. So like, I don't oh, think, okay. Like I You're think, on board. I think the first time I ever was aware of it, like my, my someone older than me, maybe my parents or my grandparents or somebody, somebody had told me 
oh, that's the Twilight Show. There's a Twilight Zone. That's sort of a legendary show. It's really good. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So oh, I think I always, I always had that in my head that it was a good show. So you didn't need to watch it. You already knew it was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you reminded me of another, uh, another great ending I thought of that could have made something better. Did you guys ever see the movie Gattaca with Ethan Hawke? I think I've seen about 75% of it. Well, the the premise is uh, they can, you know, do genetic testing on babies and they can basically make everybody's DNA perfect. But every once in a while, there's a mistake that they don't account for. And because almost everybody is genetically perfect, these other people are shunned and they basically, they're not allowed to go to the same schools because nobody wants to be responsible for when they break down. Uh, you have to sign waivers for him. So Ethan Hawke is one of those kids, they call him broken ladders. Um, so he doesn't have the same opportunities as his brother, who is, who is not a broken ladder. Um, but then they switch, they switch uh, identities. Basically the, the premise is they said there was something wrong with him because they saw it in his DNA, but he was just as able as everyone else in this weird futuristic world where everything's supposed to be perfect. Um, and he's working toward him and, uh, Uma Thurman are working toward this goal of colonizing the moon or some shit, but basically they're sending groups of young people out into space. And of course they only want to send the most healthy. So he gets through this thing without being discovered. And at the very end, him, Uma Thurman and about four or five other young people are in this spaceship and the door closes and they go off into space. The end, that's the end of the movie. Now I'm not saying it's a bad ending, but I'm saying, wouldn't it have been a much better ending if through all this movie where he showed that he's just like everyone else, as the door is closing, he goes, it has a heart attack and then the fucking ship. Wouldn't that have been the best fucking ending? Well, right. That's the Twilight Zone ending. And that would have made the movie worth watching, quite honestly. Let me tweak it a little because I like the idea. You find out at the very end, either something wrong with him and yours is he has a heart attack. What if though the door closing and then at the very last minute he goes oh i just pooped myself do you know what i mean because that's what's wrong with him he just poops himself how about the door closes but he ha he was holding on to the edge and it closes on his hand and he's like oh my mama and he pulls it out and everyone just just looking at him right and he thinks it says lunch. I'm not gonna tell you what it actually says. He thinks it's- Oh, says that sounds like a good episode of I, something. Yeah, I am gonna tell you what it says. It says dinner. <laughs> so he couldn't read. Is that the twist? He was perfect physically, but he couldn't read? Yeah, yeah, because he broke his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Griffin. All right, let's move on to trivia. Jim talked about uh, that episode with Billy Mumy. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great life. Uh, and uh, some of you might remember when they remade it for a segment of the movie, The Twilight Zone, the movie. That one, they um, gave the happy ending and ruined. What? They changed the ending, and I think it's dumb. Yeah, the ending of the movie is a happy ending. The, the woman and the kid go off and have a happy life. But yeah, the ending of the first one, it's not like happy. The right thing, because instead of just making a straight remake, then why did you go to the theater? So they had to, but... No, yeah, I say remake it any way you want, and you can like one or the other. Also, that that remake Joe Dante thing, I mean, that's like, that's like a Gremlins. It's like a, it's like a fucking Gremlins movie. There's so much crazy crap in it, um, more so than the, the original episode. Uh, but when they uh, brought it back on UPN, uh, when I mentioned before, when Forrest Whitaker hosted, they remade that episode, uh, basically did a sequel that, of that episode, It's a Great Life. Um, and Billy Mumy re uh, played that part again, played that same part, but he was grown up and had a daughter. He is only one of two people to, uh, to what's the word? To bring back a character, uh, the same character from the original series and play it again in a later episode. Who is the other actor who did that? Does that make sense? Did I word that correctly? You did, you did. Okay, so what do you, do you guys have a guess? I do actually have a guess that's not ridiculous. It's a long shot guess, but I could see the character coming back. So okay. I'm going to guess Robert Redford because he played Death. Robert Redford as Death. That is not correct. Death has been in other episodes, but not played by Robert Redford. 
great episode, by the way. My God. I love it. Tom, do you have a guess? Was it that guy that got turned into a Jack in the Box? Yeah, <laughs> from that same episode? Uh, no, it's not him. Okay. All right. So those are uh, decent guesses, but they're incorrect. If you have a guess and you want to... Wait, uh, is, Jim, uh, is Jim trying to speak? I, it looks like he's mouthing something. I'm not watching him. I like the idea of him coming in and go, by the way, I'm still a Jack in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> well the episode's all about him it's like his life what does he do these days how does he get by it's really more of a catching up like a 30 for 30 all right uh <laughs> so uh if you know if you think you know the uh, the answer to that episode um uh you can contact me in many ways the last show um three people had the correct answer to the uh to the trivia question which means at least three people have listened to this show which is pretty great i think one of them our friend dave amy got it right or something yes so one person contacted me through facebook messenger one contact me contacted me through text and then one person i think tweeted at you jim the answer and then you sent it to me yep. so there's many ways to get a hold of me but you guys all had the correct answer but the person who got it first was Truman Cadness. Uh, the question was, uh, who played, what douchebag played uh, Elongated Man on the Justice League Unlimited cartoon? Uh, the answer is Jeremy Piven. That was the famous douchebag who did the voice of Elongated Man. And all, everybody got it right who answered, but Truman Cadness was the first person who got it right. He's a longtime listener from good. back in the day. What? Good, good dude. Good dude, yeah. So um, as a prize, I offered him a spot on my game show. <clears throat> so um, uh, he's going to play as a contestant on my game show. And uh, since we're, I brought it up, um, you can watch my game show on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash thekingotv, or you can just search thekingotv on Twitch. And I got uh, clips of past shows as well as the whole show. You can watch up there. Uh, uh, we do it every other Wednesday uh, live on my Twitch channel. Um, I got some great guests. I had a Stereos Kokinos on last time. That was very fun. And uh, I got a show tomorrow with some people. But coming up, Jim is going to play along with Truman Cadmus. And I got uh, Ale our old friend Alex Bays uh, to play, uh, who is the head writer for Late Night with uh, Seth, uh, Seth Meyers. So, um, so that should be a fun show. Uh, I asked both you guys, but did you see that text, Tom? Do you want to play sometime? Uh, I saw it, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, watch a clip of the show, and if it's something you like, uh, let me know, uh, and we'll play. Um, but you can see that, uh, uh, and if you want to be a contestant, if you watch it, and you want to be a contestant on my show, answer a trivia question, and uh, you'll get to be a regular person playing with all the big shot comics. Um, Jim, you wanted to plug some stuff? I do. Well, first, uh, I'll bring up this topic, and then... Hopefully Tom will have something to add in here because Paul would did seem flummoxed. Uh, so it's a Rick and Morty thing. Wait, wait, uh, do your plugs first. So we oh, get, oh, the plug makes more sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, my bad. Oh, well, that's okay. Normally I'm being dumb, and so you're right to think I am. <laughs> uh, so Rick and Morty, uh, one of the things that goes along with Rick and Morty is just a wealth of fan theories. I think, Tom, you can back me up on that. And I think more than it feels like for a show that's as young as it is uh, uh so many fan theories like it feels like more than say for star trek it feels like there's just so many fan theories so i'll give an example and maybe tom you can give us one an example is that evil morty uh the theory is evil morty is this rick's original morty and our Morty that we've been watching isn't Rick's original Morty. So that's an example. And then there's videos with, look at this scene, and look at this scene, and look at this scene. Tom, give me an example of another one. Well, I th think there's theories that, like, that we're not even watching the same Rick and Morty that we were at the start of the series, that they secretly switched them out at one point. There's, this, there's theories that, you know, in the episode where they, Jerry Daycare, that they may have switched Jerry's at the end of that episode, that we're not watching the same Jerry we were. So there's a lot of those kind of theories. And we, we, since the show is about, uh, has a lot to do with parallel universes, that it lends itself to those kind of theories. Yeah. And there's, so at first I found this kind of irritating that so many 
I, I don't know why I should be irritated. They're strangers and I didn't have to watch their YouTube video, but I can be very Paul that way. That's why we're best friends. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got kind of swept up and I made my own fan theory video. Uh, so I would love you to check it out uh, on my YouTube channel. And uh, I go into detail. So I want to tell you the theory and the theory is going to sound outrageous but I go into detail, it's a pretty long video. My theory is that Rick is Morty's grandfather. Hmm. So, so not his father, but either the father of either his mother or his father. Exactly, so it's a lot to kind of soak in. If you watch my video, I go into detail supporting the premise and also, sort of a companion is that Morty is Rick's grand son. Hmm. So well, the I, math checks out. I do a long video about that. And you lay it all out? Yeah, I do. I make the argument. I, uh, it's, a, it's a classic Rick and Morty fan video. I talk too long. I sound like a guy who shouldn't be on a microphone. Um, I sound like a guy who's probably mad about stuff he has no business being mad about it's pretty good it's pretty good so uh, where can people see that uh, my uh comic jim bruce is my handle everywhere and you'll find my youtube channel that way and you also have uh, other shows where you talk about movies you have another show about movies you show this is actually pretty useful so if you're in late 40s early 50s this is a movie review show i think you'll enjoy it's called when should i pee and uh what i do is i talk about movies that i like and then i tell you the perfect time to go pee like it could be theater movies but even let's say you're watching with friends and you're watching you don't want to pause the movie and ruin it for people because it tends to disrupt your people's enjoyment of the movie but you got to get up and pee because you're 50 uh, I tell you the perfect times to pee. So I did Shawshank Redemption. I gave you three times when you can go pee during that movie and you did not miss it much. Those, that's pretty nice. And, and again, on your YouTube channel? channel? And of course, Bath Talks, if you want to see me naked. Yeah. So, uh, so let me ask you guys this about Rick and Morty because uh, I enjoy the show, but I enjoyed the show and nothing else. I don't care what you think about Szechuan sauce. I don't care about your theories. I have no interest in anything outside of watching the show and laughing at it and saying to my friends, wasn't that good? Um, but part of the, re the reason I like it so much is, is the idea, and I, I always thought this was the premise of the show, the idea that Rick is not just a nihilist, but he, he's, he goes beyond nihilism. Like it's not that nothing matters, it's that everything has already been done. Every decision has already been made. Every person has already paid the price for whatever they're going to do. Everything has already been equaled out and written down, and this is the way it's going to be. So whatever decision you make, it, nobody cares. Basically, there's nothing to get excited about. That's what I get out of the show. There's nothing to be excited or nothing to be surprised about because this was all planned long in advance. And I think that that's that's what i get out of the show uh because rick says that many times throughout the show but yeah. i find it hilarious that that is so uh counterintuitive to this idea that there's all these hidden meanings and and uh and you know different ideas and they're trying to get across this and this thing happened and what does it mean uh, i the the last episode uh, case in point when another beth shows up and they keep arguing who's the real beth it becomes clear early on. We nobody knows who's the real Beth. That question is gone. So is, the answer to that question is lost to humanity, and that's the point. Is that the real Rick? Is that the real Morty? Which Earth are we on? Nobody fucking knows anymore. So give up. That's what I get out of it. it reminds me. Uh, of well, so I, I mean, you're on the right track, but it's I don't. It's not. It's not because all of this is preordained. It's not because all of this was decided. Rick's particular um, existential crisis comes from the fact that there are infinite universes, which means 
everything has happened and is happening infinite times. Right. So, like, to him, okay. if you destroy a planet, it doesn't matter because that planet still exists an infinite number of times. So, in a sense, there's no consequence to anything you do. Because, sure, you've, you've affected this universe, but there's an and infinite number or- of other universes you right. cannot affect. And it seems like he's saying, like, it's good or bad. He's saying, first of all, don't kick yourself because you just killed one Beth out of a zillion Beths. So no big deal. But he also says, hey, don't be so proud of yourself. You just killed one Dracula out of a zillion Draculas. He's right. basically saying it's all, it's all on one level. But uh, yeah, and, and, and so that's why Rick is never impressed or, or depressed by anything, right? That's what I get out of it. But what do you think, Tom, about how that runs counterintuitive to all these ridiculous theories and people getting losing their shit over Szechuan sauce? Well, I mean, people are going to, this is not the, this would not be the only show where people get lost in the minutia of a show that's not really about the plot. Um, <laughs> True. I mean, if you're, my favorite anime of all time is Neon Genesis Evangelion, and that's a pastime among Evangelion fans. Like, there's all this, like, symbolism uh, in Evangelion, um, the the actual plot of Evangelion gets obscure at points, but it's not really about the plot. It's it's really a psychological show at the at the at the end of the day. So uh, it, you can engage with the show on that level, or you can get lost in the minutia of trying to figure out what the symbolism is and like what's what's actually happening on the show when that's mm-hmm. not even what the show's a review about. So I I'm not. It doesn't surprise me that people would spin themselves in circles on Rick and Morty trying to figure out plot details that weren't were by design not meant to be figured out um because that's what people do especially especially when there's something you love and you want to think about it you look for ways to think about it (laughs) that's true hey i look for ways not to think about things here's a here's a thought i had uh so i'm sure you've watched the good place right so in the good place uh spoilers for that because that's an incredible show and you should watch it and not be ruined by me but if, you ha- if you're still around, um, one of the things they talk about in that one is people get to a place they call heaven, and it goes on and on and on, and people don't enjoy it, and it's actually terrible. And at some point in the show, they conclude heaven, if it went on forever, is worthless, and that really the meaning from life comes from its part, a lot of the meaning from life comes from the fact that it's finite that we derive a lot of meaning like Buddy. I lost Buddy recently, my little boy. And while I'd love to have him around forever, if I did, then it wouldn't be particularly meaningful. So- No, just in case somebody had a heart attack, you're talking about a dog, which is no less a loss for you, but you might've just scared someone with the way you phrased that. Yeah, oh yeah, true. Um, But they should know it's just as bad, so who cares? I mean, if you want- (laughs) They can Google it if they're really that worried. Ultimately, I guess The Good Place addresses that issue in a very warm way, and Rick and Morty addresses it in a very brutal way, but it's the same idea, which is just that without consequences, without knowing that your life is finite, there just isn't a lot to it. I mean, it's just like a video game where if you use all the cheats, you're not really enjoying the game. The game's not so great if all you do is the cheats, because sure, you get to see the neat stuff, but you certainly don't get any sense of accomplishment. Remember that kid who came to school saying he beat a game and you knew it's because he had bought uh, one of those Game Master things, or remember those? A, a Game Shark. Yeah. yeah, he bought a Game Shark, you know, because the kid had never talked about beating games before. All of a sudden, he's beating all the fucking games. Man, fuck you, kid. <laughs> Let me ask you guys this. To remind me, Jim, I wanted to ask you, have you guys seen that show Great on Hulu? It's about one of the queens of Russia, Catherine's. Have you mm. guys seen it? No. Oh, because I wanted to ask you what you thought of it. Pretty great. Okay. Um, what <laughs> yeah. about now, Tom, you said uh, you were watching uh, some shows on this new channel. What's it called? HBO Max. Yeah, I've heard of HBO, and don't call me Max. Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a new one in the bucket. Clank. Ask me if I have HBO Max. Do you have HBO Max? No, I have TV Max. (laughs) There's so many ways you can go with it. It's an old joke and a new one. 
Um, but I honestly, for reals, because I, I, uh, I have cut the cord so long ago and I just pay for the services I want, which is many, uh, HBO Max is not available to me because they don't have a Roku channel yet. So they don't uh, have, yeah, they're not on Roku. That's kind so, of a thing. Uh, I think the only way I could watch it is to pay for Apple TV, which I refuse to do. Mm. Um, but can you, can you, do you have H access to HBO Max, Jim? So I'm going to ask Tom, I have HBO. This is a separate thing you got to pay for. Yes. No, if you have HBO, you should have HBO Max. It's basically replaced HBO Go. I yeah, I have HBO Now, which is which is uh, this the, the the channel, the standalone like Roku channel, streaming all streaming stuff. Yeah, yeah. H the HBO's made a like really confused everyone with the way they've divided their services, but um, because they're also giving it away free if you have certain cable companies, it's included. It just showed up on your on your yeah. Service. So H HBO Max is their new streaming service it's the hbo content plus a bunch of stuff from like from the whole corporate family um so and I, a lot of new stuff though as well so it's all the it's all the warner stuff and turner and whatnot and then they're, and they're starting to do um original content on it too and some um, stuff like the second season of doom patrol is on there yeah second so second season of doom patrol move i think they're actually showing it both on dc universe. yeah I'm, I, I'm watching it on dc universe yeah it's um, both but uh, one of the show, uh, one of the shows that moved there uh, was Search Party, which started on TBS. The first two seasons aired on TBS, but season three is on HBO Max and just came out on Thursday. And I I binged through it this weekend. Oh, okay. So you watched the whole thing? Yeah. How does it, uh, without ruining anything, how does it compare to the other two? Because the first yeah. and second season are drastically different. Mm -hmm. Like so much show that it might it might as well be a different show. Yeah. The, the characters are so different. So how does the third season shape up? It definitely, it, it definitely continues the trajectory of season two. It picks up okay. where, from where season two ends, you know. So, okay, spoilers. So at, season, at the end of season two, they get caught, right? Right, because they had accidentally murdered. Well, not accidentally, but they had killed a dude. Yeah. Uh, so se season one, is, it has its own story, but it leads up to them accidentally killing some or semi-accidentally killing somebody yeah um season two becomes about how bad they are at covering that up <laughs> season three is the trial oh shit i gotta watch that, that and it's good. it's good and it has it has there's a moment in in episode nine there's a moment where some evidence comes out that should be completely damning and they get away with that moment for a reason that is so stupid, but is also real. Like you'll recognize, you'll know what it is, what phenomenon is there that they're referencing. And it was, it was hilarious to me. Like it's the, I, I was like, man, no other show could get away with what they're doing right now, but this is so this show and it's brilliant. All right. Um, I, I want to watch it. That's just, it's a really great dark comedy. It reminds me a little bit. I, I actually, th I, I had, a, I thought about person of interest when I was watching it a little bit because it's a show that starts out seeming like one show. And then the longer, the farther you get into it, the more you realize it's headed somewhere you didn't expect and it becomes mm. a different show, but you're like, Oh, but this makes sense. I understand how they got here. Right. Like we're person of interest starts out very procedural and you think it's just sort of a, it's just sort of a, you know, a case of the week show with this window dressing. And then the longer right. it goes, you start to realize, Oh no, this is actually, this was secretly a sci-fi show all along. Yeah, and it's it, it 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 turns into what what looks like a really cool Joss Whedon show, but he's not involved. <laughs> yeah, because I just rewatched Dollhouse, uh, and and which I barely I don't even think I watched the second season of Dollhouse when it was on, but that's a perfect example where you just think it's a she's a doll of the week and here's a new story, but no, there was a very involved thing going on yeah. that it eventually turns into. Yeah. There's some really good stuff in dollhouse. Um, yeah. And, and, and Bear were, Jokai, how good was Enver Jokai on that? Oh my God. He's so good on that. Right. Right. It's funny because I, I watched and cause he's now on shield. He's yeah. back on shield now. Uh, and I was like, God, if it wasn't for Joss Whedon, nobody would know how fucking amazing this guy is. And it's he's like, good. He's good on Shield, and and was good on on Agent Carter. But they're only using like a, a small portion of what he can do. Yeah, he was also. I don't know if you guys watched uh, that very short lived show. Uh, what was it called? It was about a little girl who was basically uh, a robot. Um, small Wonder. 
<laughs> no, it was just on last season. It was brand new. Uh, but uh, it was created by Tara Butters and Michelle Fazekas, who were the, the writer who wrote uh, a lot of Joss Whedon stuff. And it was very much like this, where there was shit coming out later on that it was, but he was on that. He played an FBI guy on mm. that. And now that I say it out loud, I realize that's why, because he was on Dollhouse as well. Um, all right. And there was another show uh, you said you watched, the new Adventure Time show. Yeah, Adventure Time Distant Lands. Uh, is that just about BMO? Is that like a, a BMO spinoff? It's, it's a BMO-centric episode, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know how long it is. I want to say it's about 40 minutes. It's, I think it's, long, it's, a, it's a long Adventure Time episode, but it's, I think it was probably not quite feature length, but... So it's very adventure time. It's very adventure time. If you like adventure time, you'll probably like it. So there's man, multiple episodes, but you only watched one is what you're saying? Well, they've only, they're going to do more, but they, Oh, they didn't release them all. released once. one. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, yeah. I want to see it for, for uh, that other show. And Brooke wants HBO max to watch the BMO show. Yeah. So we'll probably get it. All right. So, yeah, I, definitely, I definitely wanted to mention um, search party. Cause I, I feel like, people might not know that there is a third season because it's switched networks. And I feel like HBO has not, has not really pushed it that hard. I've I had no idea. I mean, honestly, I looked at all the new shows and everything that was going to be on and I still didn't know because there's a lot of stuff on there. There's a sh shitload of programming on HBO max. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else that we wanted to talk about before we wrap this up? Well, Excellent. Uh, <laughs> I have a mashup for you. Okay, good. Then uh, let's go ahead and do, do that and end the show. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Before I do that, I want to ask you a question about the TV. And that is, uh, so I do the mashups, right? Uh -huh. I have to come up with the mashup where I think of the two celebrities. And more and more, I'm like, fuck, I'm old. Because I'm like, Ugh, let's see if I got a Hal Linden or something. <laughs> you go through that as the king of TV where you're like, eh. I'm the king of old TV now. Because well, I it's funny. Well, yes, because uh, my short-term memory is is pretty bad for some reason. And uh, yeah, for, so, for some reason. I don't remember a lot of what some, I want. For some recreational reason. <laughs> Yet, I still remember a bunch of shit from the old days. So to some people, like when <laughs> I play poker with a bunch of guys my age, and one of them says, hey, does, it, does anybody remember what the name Horshack means? And I say, yeah, it means our cattle are dying. Yeah, I remember that from when I watched Welcome Back, Cotter as a kid. But I can barely remember something I watched. Sometimes, this is a true story. I will be sitting in front of the TV watching something with commercials. And the commercial will end and the show will come back on. And I will have to, and I will think, oh, fuck, what show is this? And I, I'll have to wait for the show to remind me what show I'm watching. Yeah, I... So yes, is the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> it's so funny because I, 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 doing the mashups, I'm like, this is why it's good that I'm not a pop culture stand-up because my stand-up is mostly about me being an old dumb creep or whatever and my life and whatever. But if my stand-up were, if I was the guy who was like, hey, aren't you mad about this movie? I'd still be going, hey, guys, you remember the Apple Dumpling Gang, right? Remember how mad we are about that? What if Don Knotts did this? And everybody goes, ah, I hate this old guy. <laughs> Whereas now people are like, this old guy is pretty funny, but somebody walked me to my car. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I got a Mac. Right. Struggling to find something that everyone can relate to, but I think I got one. Hold on a minute. I got a little costume for you. Oh, God. Oh, I hope it's that guy from your store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right, let's this will this will work fine. All right, is this helping you guys? Or just all right for everybody watching at home? Jim has fashioned his mask into an eye patch for the oppression yeah. for the mashup. You're a hard man to get a hold of, Mister Stark. Also, you're not dead yet. This is, you're not dead yet. Remember that Avenger, Avengers Initiative? Uh, well, I got a new project I want you to help me with. I'm going to dress up as a bunny rabbit. I want you to dress up as like a fawn or something. And we're going to have sex at a party. Mr. Stark, you and I are going to have sex. Yeah, I'm going to dress up as a bunny rabbit, pink bunny rabbit. You're going to dress up as a fawn. Uh, I'm going to get yeah. Peter Parker there. Oh, that's not legal. Okay, Peter Parker won't be there. 
<laughs> I know what it is. I'm sure Tom knows what it is. Do you want to say it, Tom? No. I didn't think you would. He is. There's going to be a hole in the bottom of the costume. Yeah. I'm kind of mad about this. <laughs> well, yeah. Send any of your complaints to directly to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Do not send them to us because we're on your side. It'll send them directly to Jim. But this is Nick Furry. That's right, it's Nick Furry. Uh, now, it's my understanding that sex is actually a, a very small part of the furry lifestyle. I didn't mean to insult your life. <laughs> well, I'm not a furry. I look furry with my beard and all, but I'm not a furry. I don't have any suits or anything. Also, Nick Furry is an actual comic book character from the Spider-Ham oh, yeah. universe. Right. He's a bunny, right? I, I, won't, I forget what he is, but I think he's a bunny with an eye patch. Yeah, there's Iron Mouse and Spider-Ham and Nick Furry. He doesn't dress up like a bunny, right? He just well, he's a, He is a bunny. He dresses up like a dude. Uh, he's a <laughs> <laughs> right don't all the characters in the, <laughs> the, 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 the funny animal universe they dress as they dress as humans and people think it's weird <laughs> exactly <laughs> why are you guys always wearing clothes like weirdos uh all right well that was fun it wasn't funny but it was fun all right is that the end then are we all done that's it okay thank you guys for listening and we're gonna go fuck ourselves goodbye in costume <laughs>